Hey, 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 it's Adele from Let's Get Inky. And today we're doing possibly one of my favorite projects that I've ever shared for you over here on Let's Get Inky. I'm making these sweet little canvases and it was made so easy by using napkins or serviettes, whatever you may call them in your country. I'm using these lovely ones from Jane Davenport and uh, my friends and I found them when we went away for a weekend and there was only one pack, but luckily, there was, I think, five of each type of napkin in the package. So we managed to split it and we all got a little bit of them. But I'm going to be honest, I want them all now. Now that I've done this little project, I want every single one of them repeated so I can use them over and over again. So the canvases that I'm using are just some very cheap ones from uh, my local, I think I got them from the reject shop, very cheap bargain shop and their canvas board so they're really really durable uh, they're very sturdy and they're easy to paint on I find them a lot easier to paint on than uh, framed canvas it's just because you've got something to press down on so I'm using some of my dilutions paints and I'm using a, a range of colors some of the pinks purples blues and I tried to choose colors that I thought would match well with the images on the serviettes and or napkins. Sorry, I'm going to call them serviettes because that's what I usually call them here. Uh, I'm going to just do some really blocky painty sections in the background. And the great thing about this technique is that it doesn't have to be neat and you can make it as messy as you want because we're going to do stenciling and stamping and all sorts of goodness over the top of it. So basically you're just covering up the white so you can choose whatever colors you want um, and just slap on some of that paint and try what I tried to do was make no two canvases the exact same color palette. Uh, so some of them are extremely pink some of them are pink and purple some of them are pink and blue some of them are just bluish and actually no none of them are just bluish they all I think have a speckle of pink somewhere on them um, but the great thing about these mini canvases is that if for some reason there's one that you stuff up there's one that you hate um, you can always paint it black I've done that in the past I've had many pages that have just been completely covered black um, but you can just change it so that it's a set of four canvases or a set of three you can just pick your favorite ones they don't have to be all together I think also if you're starting with this off the page kind of mixed media art I think that starting small is a good way to go. I've been make painting and doing canvases and all sorts of fun stuff for years, but I still prefer these small canvases. I'm, I'm a bit, oh, I either prefer really, really small or humongous, like the size of a television, like a really giant canvas. And I don't really like the middle ground. So for YouTube, it's a lot easier for me to film this small size rather than uh, the really large canvases that I like to do as well. Let me know if you would like to see more canvas painting videos. I usually do like art journaling and traveler's notebook journaling and junk journals and that type of thing over here. But um, a couple of years ago, I did some mixed media girls, which uh, you guys like, seem to like, I think. Uh, and I, I think I did one. Oh no, that was over on Inky Quill on the twelve days of twelve days of inky Christmas I think no so I haven't really done many over here so let me know if it's something that you'd like to see more often um, I really want to do a big one I have got two blank canvases just waiting calling my name one of them I think one of them's 1.2 meters long possibly it's quite a giant one and I've got the perfect spot where I want to put it I've just got to figure out what to do on it so here are my backgrounds and I purposely didn't blend um, the the paint colors on all of them some of them I did it's a very it's kind of like a freeing paint uh, experience I know that sounds silly but it's kind of just nice to slap paint on a canvas and not worry about painting neatly or what the final product will be when I started these, I wasn't quite sure how they were going to turn out. I didn't really know if I was going to do stenciling on them, on all of them, on any of them. Uh, and I wasn't quite sure what uh, images from the napkins that I was going to use either. But in the end, 
I went with this girl because her background is just phenomenal. So the important thing if you're using serviettes, napkins in your art is to peel off that back layer. Sometimes some serviettes are sneaky and have two layers. So be careful. Most of them only have one, um, but if you've got fancy expensive ones, they might be extra plush. But I'm just using some matte gel medium to stick that down and be careful because you can rip holes in their heads like I just did. Good thing is we can always cover that up. It's all good. Um, and all I'm doing is I use, I have a specific brush that I use when I use gesso and uh, gel medium because over time, those mediums do stuff up your brushes a bit. They make them a bit gluggy and a bit um, chunky, I guess is the best word for it. So I, I put the matte gel medium uh, underneath and over the top. And when you put it over the top, the napkin itself kind of melts into the background I guess I, I'm sure there's a proper word how to say it but it kind of just fades away you can still tell it's there so you can see with this girl's just above her hair you can still tell it's there and if you're worried about that you can perfectly cut your design right up to the um to the outline of your image but I I didn't mind and honestly in the long run you can't really tell too much now here I I am failing at peeling that off because my hands are all sticky and I'm too stubborn to pause the camera and try and wash them. I'm sticking down a bit of that uh, off cut from that girl image and I'm just going to rip it. The great thing about using serviettes is that you can, when they're wet, you can just rip them. I'm not sure if, um, if you saw it before when I was, I say cutting, I wasn't cutting out, when I was uh taking that little girl image that's just in the top of the screen that we can't really see very well when i was removing her from her friends on her napkin i just used some water i think i might do it here yep perfect timing adele so i just used some water to trace where i wanted to rip and when you wet the serviette it makes it tear away a lot easier so that's a, a little trick if you're um, if you don't want to cut it because it can be difficult to cut this texture sometimes it it rips or it um, kind of moves around your scissors a little bit and it's not too easy you can always just use some water so you can see you can still see the halo of uh, the napkin background but I we're, we're okay we're going to work with it then it's time to stencil now this is my favorite stencil of all time and I don't know what brand it is I'm so sorry it's mm, could be memory box or is that another one of my favorites that I don't know what it is and people tell me what it is? It could be Memory Box. I'm not quite sure. Um, but it's a floral one that I've had for ages. And I'm kind of overlapping the actual image and the background. And by doing that, you kind of pull your image a bit closer to the background and make it look like they connect together and it's not just plonked on and doesn't belong. It kind of gives it a sense of belonging. So then I decided to go stamping crazy and I think blue and pink are two colors. They're, they're my favorite colors to, to work with. If you watch my main channel, Inky Quill, you'll know that I scrap a lot in those colors. Um, scrapbooking, sorry, if you're new to my channel and you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but blue and pink are two colors that even though they are warm and cool, which sometimes uh, doesn't work like the old yellow and purple probably wouldn't give you the same look if you were mixing them together but the there's something about them that it does seem to pop off each other they they do work really nicely so after I've added some pink stenciling you can see that I've added the same stencil with pink on three of them and then the same stencil with white on two of them and that's a nice way to make your canvases look cohesive without doing the exact same thing on every single canvas. I've also, some of them I've only done a tiny bit of the stencil, others like that top left one, I've gone all out and it's just a flower craziness. Um, and it's, I think it's nice to kind of change it up and use the same products, but use them either in different ways or with different colors or different sizes, different shapes, um, but it still gives a bit of a link between them. So I'm just filling in any spots that I feel like need a little extra detail. And now what am I going to do next? Is it time for stamping yet? Oh, it's time for the Inca Gold, I think. 
So I'm grabbing this Inca Gold and it is such a beautiful product. It's it's like gold texture paste, but it doesn't go a long way like texture paste. Well, texture paste doesn't really go a long way, but this really doesn't go a long way. It I seem to go through the pots quite quickly. That could be because I love to put gold on everything. But I've got this little Constellation stencil, which I'm also not sure where it's from, sorry. Uh, it's a new one though, so you should be able to track it down. Who does those square? I think it's the same company that does the flower one. Mm, if I can remember, I'll put it in the description below. But I'm just adding a few little Constellations here and there. And oh, I love it. So I'm not going to use this stencil on everything because I think that well, I, I don't think I am going to. From memory, I don't. Who knows what video Adele's going to do. Uh, but from I think that it's, it's nice to have some finishing details that are only on a few of the canvases, I guess. So I'm just doing a little bit here. And I am leaving space because I know on one of them, I really want to add um, an embellishment of some sort. I'm not sure exactly what yet, but some sort of embellishy thing is going to go in the middle of one of these canvases. The Inca Gold is harder to spread. Um, I think the from all of the texture pastes I've tried, I think I've tried like five or six different ones. The smoothest one to move is the Faber-Castell Whipped Spackle. I love the name of it, Whipped Spackle. Uh, however, it is quite pricey for how much you get. So I tend to use the Liquitex uh, modeling paste, I think they call it. Modeling paste, texture paste, it's the same thing. It's just, it's like serviette, napkin, different names, same thing. Um, and I'm just doing a little bit of background stamping here using the Dilutions Black Ink and um, an old stamp, I believe, from Finnebear, I'm going to say. I'm guessing so. We'll see if that's, I think that's right. Then I've got this other one that's, it's a bit like a, it's a bit like Hessian or a, a grid. That's a bit like a grid pattern, but it looks more fibery than a, a grid that you'd find in a textbook. So then I've got my food ball, which is my favorite black pen to do nice thick heavy lines in my art journaling. And I decided to do a bit of a scripty quote here and I'm just writing straight onto this canvas. Uh, I haven't measured it out. I haven't, I haven't really planned it. I'm just going for it because you can always cover it up with something um, if you don't like it. And then I thought the girls looked a little flat. They, they weren't popping. And so to make them pop, I decided to outline and go over the lines of the napkin with my food ball. And it really did bring, you'll see here just with her eyes, it really did bring them out. And it kind of defined this girl's hair because it did start to get a little crazy with all of that stenciling in the background. It kind of defined it a little bit more. This is actually one of my printables uh, from Patreon for February. And it was a Project Life card, but um, I made it into a just a, a normal embellishment. And this is actually the original version, I think. Or is it the scanned one? No, I think it could be the original. Yeah, it is. So this is the original, um, which I quite often don't know what to do with afterwards. I think that I need to stick them straight into my art journal and get them in a place because otherwise I feel like I can't use them. I, I, silly, they're already scanned in and saved. But yeah, I, I think that I feel like they need a special purpose. So I'm just sticking it on this canvas because it was kind of looking a bit plain and need a little extra something. Um, by the way, if you want any more information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description box that has a video that tells all about it and what's available and all of that. So now it's time for a doodly border because I do love a good doodly border. If you watch my Inky Quill channel, you'll know that I find it difficult to do a scrapbook page without some sort of doodly border on something, whether it's around the outside of the page or just around some of the embellishments. And here I did a white doodly border. Let's see how many times I can say doodly border in one video. Uh, I did a white one, which was something a little bit different for me. And I love it. I, I really need to do it more often. And then this is quite possibly one of my favorite things. 
I started to go around with the white paint pen. It's a Sharpie um, paint pen. And look at how that image now has just changed. It just, it brings it out and makes it, I don't know, I don't know, catches your attention. And it, I just think it makes it look a little bit prettier. So here I decided to just draw some little hearts just to add something else into the background. And then this one, of course, needed a white doodly border. And it's similar to what I did with the uh, paint with the flower stencil. It's the same concept spread across the different canvases, but different colors. So here I've got white doodly borders instead of black, but it's it connects them all together in the long run. And then I decided to outline my stenciling. The Whenever you use the white um, dilutions paints on especially this bubblegum pink paint, it seems to blend in and it doesn't stay as white white. It kind of goes a, a an off white or changes into the the color that you're putting it over the top. So this it kind of became a, a bit of a light pink. And I decided I wanted a bit more vibrancy. So by simply outlining the stencil, it really brings it to life. If you hear a little baby in the background, my little boy Archie has just woken up from his nap and he has heard mummy talking. And so now he's trying to join in on the voiceover. Um, so here I've grabbed my paint, Posca paint pen and I love this color. It's a turquoisey one and it's just beautiful. And I decided to do just a few little plus signs here and there um, throughout the canvases. And then I grabbed this powder blue color. And these are my two favorite colors of paint pens at the moment. They're they're colors which I, I feel like I can make work for any layout. I guess it's because most of the things that I do have either a hint of powder blue or turquoise on them <laughs> and they seem to, to work quite, quite well. Now it's time for the white splats and if you're new to my channel I go a bit crazy with my white splats because I use a uni, um, is it uni ball? Yeah, uni, uni ball. That's the brand, I think. Uh, it's a chalk texture, and I used to have a wedding hire business where I did custom blackboards for um, brides and events. And so I have a whole lot of these chalk textures that are, the nibs of them are gray and yucky, but they've still got beautiful white chalk paint inside them. So I, I wouldn't recommend that if you don't like to be messy because you get white splatters everywhere. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that little bell notification, dude. Uh, I post videos every Friday, my Aussie time, probably not your time if you're in a different hemisphere or a different time zone, but I post every Friday. I do art journaling, junk journals, um, traveler's notebooks, planners, hauls, reviews, anything arty and messy. And if you're into scrapbooking or project life, I also have my main channel, which is Inky Quill. And I also have a daily vlog channel called Mr. and Mrs. Rad. All the channels, all the things. Um, before I go, I felt like they were missing some words. And if you're a long time inklet, you know, tiny words are close to my heart and it's hard to do project without them. And so I'm just going through the Tim Holtz ones. I think it's the small talk because he has a few different ones. I think it's the small talk and I'm adding some extra glue because I never ever trust adhesive on top of mixed media on top of paint because it doesn't last. It comes flying off. Um, and then a little bit of a doodly border because, you know, I can't get enough doodly borders. And that's it. They're all done. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. Don't forget to let me know if you'd like to see some more canvases and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.